And I'm super happy, super excited um, for this new organization, the Liberty Initiative. I'm honored to be here tonight. I'm very grateful to you guys. And I'm happy to entertain any questions. Again, I'll just do it with, with the same caveat I always use. I will always be respectful and civil to you. So I ask that any questions just remain that way and will be perfectly fine. Uh, and if you have an opposing view, I'm happy to hear that too, because um, perhaps I have, a, have an answer. And I'm not looking for converts. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, and I respect that. But I, I think it's good to be objective. And uh, yes, sir. Um, Senor Garcia, on your right hand is a lovely gold ring. Yes, sir. And would you introduce this incredibly attractive lady who has graced your, your arrival? <laughs> well, uh, she's my girlfriend, Mireya Cervantes. Uh, and this ring's not related <laughs> to her, but uh, yeah, she's my beautiful girlfriend that now happens to accompany me all throughout the country wherever we travel. Are you familiar with the old class of immigrant, immigrant under, under the class of immigrants? I'm, I'm not familiar with it, but if, if the old class by that you mean our, our marriage, uh, through marriage? No. Frisky Fridays, um, uh, uh, Pamela Anderson of uh, Baywatch Bay. I'm always learning something new. You know, have gotten into this country amazingly easy under the O class. And I think that you are pushing the, the wrong, uh, who could resist? making a citizen of this incredibly attractive uh, Latina right here. I will take, you know, she can become a citizen in New York second. I'll, I'll, I'll vouch for her and invite her in, and you as her husband can be, uh, can uh, obtain Listen. the, by, by marriage, uh, it, it, I know it's a while. I, I have to say, I, I find this interesting. This is a, the second time in one day that I, I, I've been asked whether I'll be marrying this young lady. And so <laughs> I, I think that will be a, a discussion for another day. This, but this, lady, this lady can pull you through the United States in a second. I, yeah, I, I do. Thank you. I, I do. Um, and I do because my parents brought me here when I was 17 months old. Uh, my argument is that I can certainly work as an independent contractor. Uh, I'm aware of the law, being an attorney without a license uh, granted. Uh, and I, I, my legal argument is that I, there's, under the rules, I can be an independent contractor. Uh, the Department of Justice claims I cannot. I will tell you, and uh, I will tell the Department of Justice that ever since I've been working, I have been paying taxes, and I have yet to receive my money back from them. So I would imagine that they're okay with me working. So, so that's a yes, you can work as a paralegal. Yes, sir, uh, as the best of my knowledge, yes. I can work as an independent contractor, and as a matter of fact, uh, I had a thriving business before uh, my case became nationally and internationally known. Uh, at that point, regretfully, because of, of the uh, state of affairs, many people decided that you know they did not want to be Im involved. Um, so, so the idea of not practicing law in California is, is specifically to California. If you were to go to Nevada or Texas or Puerto Rico um, and pass their bar, could you could you practice law there? Uh, to answer your question, I believe some states would allow it; others wouldn't. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a possibility i rather not really consider since the bar is not all that fun to take. <laughs> but I mean, um, that, that, is an, that is an option. Uh, Oregon, Oregon was a consideration. Uh, but I want to see uh, this fight to the end. Uh, and once we have an outcome there, I guess I will have to decide whether I choose that route or 
uh, if I'm fortunate enough, maybe I'll just continue pursuing my motivational uh, speaking um, uh, career that I, I want to start out now. Independently of whether I become an attorney or not, a licensed attorney, I that's something that has always been a passion of mine. When I was in high school, I tutored elementary school kids. When I was in junior college, I came back to tutor the high schoolers and uh, so on. You know, So community service, even when I, I was a licensed attorney, uh, I would say that I spent 50% of my time donating my work. Um, I ne never dreamed of being rich. I only dreamt of being a lawyer. And that's, that's, that's a dream I still believe I'll see realized one day. And again, may, maybe I'm too, too much of an idealist. Yes, sir. You sound like a bright person to me, and it's too bad that you chose one of the most disgraceful careers to get into. <laughs> my, my parents would agree with you, sir. <laughs> Multiple attorneys, the yes. Areas of immigration law in your case. And as you already know, there are many facets, there are a lot of benefits in, into the granting uh, possibilities of immigrating to the United States. You know the concept of being under the color of law. Okay. Once you are under the color of law. There are many opportunities out there for immigrants, right? I'm not certain about the specifics of your case, but each case uh, does have a number of facts. And as an attorney, you know, you have to look at the facts. So I'm listening to you, and, and, and it's too bad, you know, that um, the state, the state, California, because you have gone to the state of California in order to the license. Certainly. The issue of the license, right? Certainly. Uh, currently, my case is, is considered a high profile case in the California Supreme Court, yes. And, and, and the courts, they have to balance the federal law. They have to look into the federal law. You mentioned the 96 ERCA. Correct. Uh, in the law and the state. Well, doesn't have to necessarily be immigration. Can be housing, can be health, can be uh, education, or or can be any other area that affects people of color. See, being a person of color has disadvantages in this society. As I don't have to elaborate on that, one. right? Correct. So, what you are facing in here is not necessarily an issue of citizenship, but it's a, in my opinion, it's an issue of that you are the wrong color. You know, you know um, uh, but, go ahead. But I'm sorry. Of course. I, this is my, part of my comment. Sure. So I cannot, you know, I cannot necessarily comprehend very, very well why is it that you do not have citizenship. You mentioned your father, your father being a citizen. I, I'm not certain about your grandparents, and I'm not certain whether your specific case has already been um, analyzed by an expert on immigration law. But there are a number of attorneys who have found, who have found, um, A, a real um, a ways to make a lot of money out of immigrants. So I'm not certain whether you're going to get into civil law or you're going to get into criminal law, but if you ever get you know what you want, think about immigration law. Because immigrants do need people with conscience you know, with understanding, and that they are going to not necessarily uh, go for what the immigration law says, says, but what the Constitution of the United States goes by. So, congratulations, and I wish you luck, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to make it. 
Well, thank you. And I'm happy to report on that note that, yes, even though I'm not a practicing attorney, uh, I have been reaching out to the Hispanic community, uh, to other uh, immigrant uh, members from other countries. Um, and been at this point, I would say, uh, modestly, I would say that we have helped about 10,000 people file for deferred action, the latest Obama program. And uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, my goal was never to be rich. My goal was simply to help others. And that is what allows me to live vicariously through their happiness and seeing the difference that is like night and day before they had a work permit, before they had a social security number, before they had a driver's license, they had to be watching over their back 24-7 uh, versus now. You sound like an attorney now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this gentleman had a question and then I'll go back to you, sir. Hey, Sergio, congratulations. Sir. Thank you. A day without a day, day without a Mexican, I believe you're referring to. Uh, but I, I, I want you, I, and I don't know if you're privy to all the information that you should that, that, that that's out there. But can you uh, can you talk a little bit of, of how uh, immigrants, even though they are not here legally, are helping the United States as opposed to? Uh, being a burden on most certainly, most certainly. I think that that's that's the greatest myth out there that immigrants are a burden to this nation, and I think that those kind of myths are uh, propounded and made worse by organizations such as Fair and uh, numbers um, that come up with these uh, numbers. Well, like they told me in school, you can make numbers say whatever you want them to say, and when when they when they write them down, when they show them to you. Uh, you would believe what they, they're trying to tell you, but the fact of the ma matter, the reality, is that the great majority of the immigrants, documented or undocumented, pay taxes. And there's this huge amount of money that's been paid into the, the tax coffers that nobody will ever claim because they can only pay into it but not get out of it. The whole idea that immigrants, undocumented immigrants, uh, take advantage of welfare and all that, that's a myth because you don't qualify for it. Myself, uh, particularly, I can tell you that I never took a dime from the government to pay for my schooling, uh, even though a lot of people out in the media have said otherwise, but they have yet to produce a receipt showing that. Uh, like I said, numbers can say anything, and, but the reality is that there is a great need for immigrants I mean, we do a great amount of work, and I have a great amount of respect for people who work out in the fields, for people who clean houses, for people who do jobs that we normally wouldn't be too excited or jumping up and down saying, pick me, pick me to do. Um, and I have the greatest uh, uh, respect for that. And I really don't, don't think that this economy and this nation can survive with that. And I think that movie goes to kind of show that. Yes, sir. Um, as a member of FAIR, Numbers USA, CAPS, and so forth, uh, I defend the documents from official government. You, we have 20, more sure. than 20 million unemployed Americans. United States, and they talk about job shortages and so forth, but if those who hire anyone who is not 
a U.S. citizen. 